All right, part eight of the video series. And this video is just gonna be about um, how I made those changes from part seven, the front splitter and the rear wing, and also mounting that uh, heat exchanger at the front. So I started off by designing the splitter and the rear wing. And once I had the design, I just took the measurements from that and made the actual thing. So now to design the splitter and the rear wing, uh, first what I did was I made a model of the car in 3ds Max. And let me just maximize this. Uh, so the way I did that was I basically took blueprints from the internet of the car, of basically the bottom side, um, a picture of the side of the car, and a picture of the uh, back and the front of the car. And basically you use these three uh, diagrams to make a 3D model. There's a, there's a lot of tutorials on the internet about how to do that, so I'm not going to cover all that. But um, So after I had that, I made the splitter and the rear wing according to that. And also following the regulations because what the CSCS regulations say is that wait let me just uh, open the so what the CSCS regulations say is that uh, the rear wing should not be any higher than the roof line of the car uh, the rear wing should not extend farther back from the car more than uh, I think five inches five or six inches I'm not sure I forgot the regulations now and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So basically what I, the biggest possible rear wing I could design was a rear wing that's pretty much as high as the roof line of the car. And that extends five inches beyond the um, back bumper of the car. So basically I designed that and um, according to that I made these three elements in there. And um, knowing that I had such a big rear wing, I had to design a front splitter accordingly. So I also had to make a front uh, splitter that was that would make something close to the same downforce as the rear wing so the car would be balanced uh, and the other thing is these elements uh, originally I was thinking I would make the rear wing fully out of carbon fiber like the rear wings on most other um, cars but then I thought that this was my first time I was making a rear wing so I, I thought what if the rear wing isn't strong enough and the car goes at high speed and the carbon fiber fails um, so what I did was I uh, made a metal structure. So all these black parts are steel tubes. There were two steel tubes at the bottom that would support the rear wing. Then there were two tubes going through this um, element and one tube through each of these top elements. And basically the idea was that if the carbon fiber does fail, the steel will still hold the wing together and the wing wouldn't go flying off into the crowd or hit someone. Um, so yeah, that's basically why I um, made the steel frame in the middle. And the splitter also had to have a steel structure because even the splitter, this is a pretty big splitter, it will have a lot of force on it when the car is going down the streets. Um, so, so this was the steel structure underneath the splitter, all these blue parts are the tubes. And these two main tubes would be bolted on four points um, in this section over here. And then the front of the splitter was secured using two cables that are not in the design. That was an afterthought. We made the splitter first and then we saw how strong it was. And then later we thought we should also add those two cables. And it did end up being pretty strong. I could jump on the splitter and it wouldn't flex or anything. So that was pretty good. So yeah, that was pretty much it for the design. The next step was to uh, take all the measurements. I started off with making the splitter first. What I did was I took all the measurements of all these tubes from the design and I made a sketch on paper and then I cut all these tubes to size and then uh, made the steel frame first and then uh, made the carbon fiber part over it. So after I did my uh, 3D model of the splitter I just uh, took all the measurements from there and drew this rough sketch of all the uh, different tubes the sizes I will need to cut and where they will need to be placed and I'll cut them according to this. Now I'm cutting all the tubes to size using my chop saw. Um, unlike when I got the push rod suspension I ordered everything to size so I didn't have to do too much cutting but for this one I just ordered 8 feet steel um, tubes and I'll just cut them myself. It's not too difficult to cut these anyways because this is a pretty thin tube so it's fairly easy. I'm just uh, using a measuring tape and I just measure out the length I need to cut and mark it there and then uh, once I cut it what I do is I write the length down on the tube just so I don't have to measure them again and again to make sure which tube goes where. I just look at the size and then um, looking at my diagram I know where the 121 centimeter tube goes. 
so it makes it easier. I just got done welding the steel structure for the splitter. Uh, these are the four holes where it's going to be mounted to the car. And now the next step is that we're going to buy some foam, put that under it, and then uh, wrap the whole thing in carbon fiber. So now the next step was to uh, make a base on which we were going to put our carbon fiber and make the carbon fiber sheet uh, for making the uh, splitter. So what we did was we took these uh, styrofoam blocks and we just wrapped them in aluminum uh, to make basically a flat surface on which to put the carbon fiber. And the thing about aluminum foil is carbon fiber doesn't stick to it so you can remove that later on. Uh, but the problem with it is that it has that aluminum foil pattern and your carbon fiber has the same pattern once you peel that off. Uh, so to get a good appearance you have to sand it down later on. So now we cut our carbon fiber to the right size. This is pretty thick carbon fiber. Um, and we use this tape around the edge just so we don't... Uh, these carbon fiber we start coming off if you don't tape the edge before cutting it. Um, so now we're just going to take this off for now and then press in the whole aluminum and then be really careful that the weaves are all straight and then put this back on the resin. Uh, so after laying the carbon fiber and uh, soaking it in resin what we did was we put the steel structure on the carbon fiber and then we took a layer of matte strand fiberglass and we put that at the back and then basically put resin over that and what mass strand fiberglass does is that it's um, it's pretty easy to bend it in different shapes that's why we use that at the back rather than using carbon fiber at the back as well because carbon fiber is really hard to bend but uh, mass strand fiberglass bends pretty easily in the shape of the tube uh, so basically at this point the steel is basically it's all one solid piece it's wrapped in the composite itself so that makes it pretty strong Okay, so after 24 hours, now my carbon fiber is dry and I've put tape along the edges so I have a straight line on where to cut the excess carbon fiber off. And now I'm going to use my angle grinder and just uh, cut, off this, uh, cut off this line and hopefully then it should be fine. So after I had cut the excess carbon fiber on the front of the splitter and on the sides, um, this is what it looked like and after this I just test fitted it on the car so I could mark the other places that needed to be cut. So right now I mounted the splitter on just to test fit everything and I'm marking this part over here where I have to uh, cut the excess splitter off because this line has to be really accurate. Uh, this is where this is the part in the wheel well where the tire will go. Uh, so this part should never touch the tire because if it does touch the tire, if this is carbon fiber, it's really hard, it's going to rip the tire apart. Uh, so yeah, then I'll take it back off and I'll cut this part and then uh, put it back on for hopefully the final time. And for lack of a better place to mount the intercooler, I think for now I'm just going to mount it over here on the splitter. But I'm going to make some ducting around it so <laughs> it doesn't look like this. The ducting is going to help the airflow too because right now the air is probably going to try to go over it rather than go through it um, but yeah now that I've marked the uh, um, parts that I have to cut off and also the part where the intercooler will mount on the splitter I'll remove the splitter one final time uh, drill all the holes and then mount it back in for the final time so after I had done all the cutting and drilled the holes for the intercooler this is what the splitter looked like um, after this I did sand the surface a little just to make it a little better but I didn't care too much about the appearance, that's why it didn't end up looking too good, but it was still okay. And now for making the end fences, the end fences for the splitter and also for the rear wing. Um, these were a little harder than just the splitter and the rear wing because they're not just a square shape or a simple shape. Uh, they have to be like this exact shape to fit with everything else. So what I did was I printed the design on um, a sheet of paper. Well, not one sheet of paper because the um, actual shape was uh, bigger than one sheet of paper. So I had to print it on multiple sheets of paper and then taped them together. So I had a template of what the exact um, piece would look like. And once I had that, I could easily cut it out of carbon fiber or out of foam. So I had my exact part that I needed to make. Okay, so now I've mounted the splitter on for the final time and I adjusted the angle of attack. And I also mounted the 
boards on the side um barge boats and fences or i don't know what they're called but uh and the next step is now that i have to fill this gap in between these boards and the bumper and i've taped it on this side and what i'm planning is that now i'm going to fill expanding foam between this gap over here i've put aluminum tape over my bumper over there so the expanding foam won't stick to the bumper but it will only stick to this uh side uh so if i want to unbolt it later on i can do that um yeah and then i'm going to do the same on the other side and also between this gap over here because there shouldn't be any gap between the splitter and the bumper you're basically trying to force all the air up over the car so it creates downforce if the uh, air keeps leaking under the splitter um the splitter is not going to be that effective Okay, now I filled all the uh, gaps with expanding foam. Uh, it looks really ugly right now, but I guess once it dries I can shape it a little better so it's not uh, that rough. But I think now I have to give it 24 hours until it dries. And then this thing will harden, it will become really hard and it will stay in place. Okay, it's the next day now and I gave the expanding foam enough time to dry. And the problem was I already started taking it off from here, but this thing just expanded all over the place. It expanded all the way from here, and it randomly just crawled right into my brake duct, and now that's all clogged up. So, yeah, that's something to be careful of. When you apply it, it doesn't expand fully, and later on it keeps on expanding. That's why it's popping out so much from underneath the bumper. But at least it's a good thing it didn't stick to the bumper, and I was able to uh, remove this part off. This was... Just coming from here and crawling all the way into the brick duct. Um, but I think it's a has it's gonna be a hassle taking all that out. Um, but anyways, yeah, now I'll have to cut all this um, access expanding foam off and hope that it doesn't look this ugly because <laughs> right now it just looks terrible. Now for cutting the expanding foam, it's surprisingly easy. I'm just using a normal knife and um, let me just show you this picture here. Just go through it and it just cuts it off. And I'll work my way all around this edge, so all this excess part that's sticking out of the bumper, I don't need that, I'll cut all that off, and um, then I'll, I'll just pull it and it just comes off, it's pretty easy. This edge is going to be a little more difficult, but I'll figure something with that too. So after I was done cutting the expanding foam off, I just painted it black so it wasn't too obvious. Um, so after this, of course, we just did the duct over the heat exchanger and the two cables which made a pretty big difference in terms of um, how much the splitter was flexing because before you had those two cables the splitter would flex if you would stand on it um, after I added those cables it was super strong you could jump on the splitter and it wouldn't flex at all so I guess the cables did help a lot so now for the rear wing um, I guess I'm not going to talk too much about it because the process is pretty similar to uh, how we made the front splitter uh, but the only difference was that we used the foam core in this one whereas in the splitter we didn't use any foam in the middle so if you look at the end fence especially you can see that um, it's two um, layers of carbon fiber one on this side one on the other side and with a layer of foam in the middle and same goes for these elements um, here's actually a, a cutaway of this element uh, this lower element um, this one wasn't actually a, sh a perfect aerofoil because this one had two steel tubes going through it because of which the center section had to be flat. Um, it would have been pretty difficult making this a perfect aerofoil shape. But anyways, this is the foam you can see over here and over here. And this foam basically makes the carbon fiber extremely hard. Um, it's a special foam, it's not just regular foam. Um, but you can get it on, most carbon fiber suppliers will actually sell it and you can sand it in different shapes and um, once you basically um, stick carbon fiber on both sides of it it just joins together and it makes the carbon fiber really solid it's a great way to make the carbon fiber more rigid and also lightweight because you won't need to pile up that many layers to get the same rigidity so here's the steel frame that went inside the lower element of the rear wing um, here's what it looked like after it was covered in carbon fiber um, this is before cutting the excess carbon fiber off. Um, here's the end fences. 
uh, the top side is just the um, foam cord that I cut out and then after that uh, on the bottom is where I wrapped it in carbon fiber and here's when both of them were done uh, after they were cured I uh, cut angle grinded all the excess carbon fiber off and uh, drilled the holes for where the bolts needed to go and here's one of the upper elements of the rear wing uh, so basically once I was done with all the um, different sections of the rear wing it was a matter of just finishing them and then um, bolting all these pieces together so now the problem was with such a big rear wing it can't just be mounted to the trunk lid because and the downforce on the drag it makes would be enough to actually damage the trunk lid um, bend the trunk lid especially because this is an aluminum trunk lid so it's not all that strong uh, so what we did was we actually made yeah I know these holes look pretty bad right now but eventually we're gonna cut out a lot a big part of this trunk lid but anyways for now we uh, made these two holes over here uh, four holes actually there's two holes under this and there's an entire uh, steel frame mounted under this that goes all the way to those two points where you can see those bolts and it goes all the way down to the um, uh, floor of the trunk so it's basically connected to the chassis so it's this is pretty much a chassis mounted wing not a uh, wing mounted on the trunk lid so that's why it's pretty strong right now like you can move the entire car and nothing really flexes uh, yeah I can't show you the structure right now because unfortunately it's a uh, it's a hassle removing the wing. Uh, it's a two person job and I don't have another person right now. Um, but with two people it is easy. Eventually what I'm thinking is that um, because it makes it so much harder to open the trunk now you have to remove the wing and then um, take the wing off entirely then open the trunk. So what I'm thinking is later on uh, what I'll do is I'll make the uh, whole trunk latch on rather than rather than the trunk pivoting open like this. I'll just add latches on the sides and a latch at the, where the lock is so the whole trunk can just be latched and can be taken off without removing the rear wing. I'll have to cut like maybe long slots over here or something so the whole trunk can be removed without taking off the rear wing because it's a hassle right now to uh, remove the rear wing and especially because there's a push rod suspension in the trunk so any suspension adjustment you have to do you have to remove it. So these mounting points are also temporary right now. I just uh, welded this steel tube over here so I could get uh, the two points. But this is all temporary. All of this has to change um, after I change the trunk lid design. Then hopefully there will just be these two tubes going straight down into the trunk and uh, they will be mounted to the um, base of the trunk itself. And that will give the wing its proper strength. Um, also, I have a lot of finishing work to do on the carbon fiber because right now it looks pretty bad and I'm guessing it all of this probably um, makes it adds a little more drag to all these rough edges and stuff. So that's it for part 8 of the video series, but there's some pretty extreme changes that we're going to do to the car over the winter. Um, we're going to be turbocharging the car, uh, we're probably going to move to a full new um, fuel system at a racing fuel tank, racing fuel pumps, new fuel lines, um, also intercoolers with the turbos we're going to need bigger intercoolers, uh, limited slip differential, possibly water injection, um, a lot of electronic work so yeah there's a lot coming up basically over the winter. I'm not sure when I'm going to get started on it because all the changes from now on are big changes so uh, yeah, I'll need to prepare my garage and everything for that. The good thing is all the changes we've made to the car so far have been positive. They've improved the lap time other than the changes of the tire obviously, but that wasn't my decision anyways. Um, but yeah, all other changes have made the car faster. Uh, so yeah, now with the power hopefully it's, it's going to be pretty amazing. Um, so I can't wait to get started on that. Um, Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Um, thanks for subscribing if you have subscribed. And I'll see you in the next part.